Well, hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to Playframe and welcome to Herald Halibut. This is an indie game that came out this year and has been in development for a long time. I remember seeing trailers for this popping up years and years ago. I think it was like a 10 year development cycle. It, it's gonna be a very interesting game to look at, I think. I'm really interested to see how it turned out after uh, all of that time. Let's, let's get a look at it. New game. This is my favorite kind of indie game to see coming out any given year. Anytime I see something that looks like very, very noticeably different from the rest of the stuff popping up on Steam. I'm a sucker for novelty, I guess. I just also love seeing indie studios bringing something very original and unique and different. How often are you seeing a game like this pop up in a given year? Harold, I'm afraid I need you to come with me. Oh, hi, Major. What's the matter? Is that leak bothering you again? It's your fine, your unpaid fine. I had a fine? You still do. Tubing without the proper credit on your tube card. Can you settle it now? Uh, no, but wait, I I'm sure I topped it up. Improper tube card management, Halibut. You surely recall that since last week, the Energy District tubes require your tube card to be topped up with blue credit. If an onward journey to the Social District is intended, in addition to the usual weekly turquoise credit. We but only last month, it was a green. I don't make the rules, Harold, but the rules make me. Now let's get you over to the Fine Secretary so we can all get on with our day. Okay. Fell foul of the end user insufficient funds clause. I'm afraid if you really can't pay, you're going to have to think of someone who can. I guess that means you'll have to wait for the professor again. Who knows what she sees in you? Right, I'm needed elsewhere. There's a disturbing rise in the number of people traveling without the appropriate tickets recently. I hope for both our sakes not to see you again soon, Harold. So here we are. And now, if you weren't already familiar with this game, you have now kind of seen what its unique... Uh, well, gimmick's not the word I'm looking for, but what makes it a unique thing visually? Like, they have gone for a uh, stop-motion aesthetic. That was kind of their main inspiration. Which is really cool. Like, so all of the assets you are seeing in here, uh, the characters and a lot of the props and environments, maybe all of them, I'm not sure, uh, are all physical objects which were handmade and then scanned uh, with photogrammetry tech and brought into Unity as like digital model objects. That is very cool. Like, I, I, it gives this all a really unique look that I think is really neat. 
The unfortunate thing, uh, and it stands out most to me, I guess, just as an animator, but the unfortunate thing is that they've opted to, for the animation of these characters, go with just uh, pretty standard motion capture for their animation, which I get. Like, I think I'm probably going to come off as sounding pretty harsh on this game <laughs> in this video, um, and I'm wanting to, like, caveat that. This is a very small indie effort. This was, like, three people working on the side on a passion project for, like, ten years, only getting some, like, funding to actually really go and make the thing toward the end. Like, any criticisms I make here are not meaning to dunk on them. Making a game <laughs> like this with three people is impressive on its own, no matter how it turns out. And a lot about this is really cool. But uh, on the animation side of things, I think going with motion capture kind of unfortunately breaks the aesthetic that they were going for here. Because a, like a core part of the visual of stop motion uh, animation is the animation itself. So if you have a bunch of stop motion characters and environments, but they are moving with fairly traditional motion capture animation and not especially polished or well implemented motion capture animation, uh, I think it kind of breaks that aesthetic look a little bit, or at least it hinders it considerably, which is unfortunate. It's still a really cool thing for them to have gone for, though. Like, I'm curious to see more of what they've achieved here. Anyway, sorry, rambling. We should interact with you. Who are you? Hello. So, what are you in for? Oh, I'm just here for the great company. Aren't you a little young to start working for Allwater? What? No, I meant... because it was a joke, doofus. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Could you let me wait in peace now? Oh, sure. We'll do. Have fun. Felix? Hi, Ma! Uh, look, before you say anything... Whatever your excuse is, it'll have to wait. Busy, busy times. Mr. Secretary, please charge whatever Felix's fine is to the company tab, please. Of course, Mrs. Van Der Vaart. Have a pleasant day. You too, Master Van Der Vaart. Freedom! <sighs> have fun, Harold! We reluctantly interrupt your daily business for an important... <clears throat> for some important information for all inhabitants of the Fedora One. Dear people, crew, and company, we seem to have discovered something super cool. Please do consider to congregate tonight at the Agora Theatre to... for some important information. Oh, Harold, here you are. I've been looking all over. Get your buns to the lab, if you please. I do beg your pardon, ma'am, but there is still the matter of an outstanding fine for Mr. Halibut to find a proxy for. A completely reasonably priced and fairly applied fine, if I do say so myself. Sir, please do not cause me further consternation. Just put it on my tab as always. Come on, Harold. Okay. I follow. I do kind of I'll enjoy the choice they've made to frame a lot of these as like the little diorama scenes. Uh, obviously the camera cuts in closer for little conversations and story moments, but this this like way of staging it all does help to kind of reinforce that puppetry uh, physical objects in a physical space sort of uh, illusion a bit. And I like that a lot. You'll need this before you go. A ticket home? Yes, and only home. It's not valid for any other routes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. And your tube pass should be unlocked again within 24 hours. So you'll be back to the luxury of fully automatic tube travel eligibility approval once again. I can't wait. All right, let's follow. Hello. Every time I need you, Harold, it's something else. What's wrong with you? I can't handle your shenanigans while we're in the middle of this mess. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Next time... This must have an underlying cause. Hmm. I remember when you were still in school and your teacher telling me about how you would just stare out of the window, oblivious Wait. to her even shouting at you. Is the... <laughs> it's like you've never snapped out of that daydream. I think they've got the audio source. Like, the source of the audio that we're hearing is... Harold's position. So, because we're far away from her, if she's still talking, we can't hear it. <laughs> Which was very strange. Can I run? 
I cannot. It was a very strange feeling being back here, having her walk closer to us, the camera, which I would normally think would be like a better audio source, like, uh, or listener for the audio to pick up. She, so she's walking away from Harold toward us, but getting quieter the closer she comes to us. I think I question that audio design decision. <laughs> I, I think we're going to run into a fair number of rough edges in here. But even so, like, look at this. Look at how cool this looks. It is really cool seeing an object like just this, this little, like, <laughs> water fountain machine thing here. Like, that feels like an actual physical thing. There's detail in that. That would be really hard to replicate. Possible to replicate, but really hard to replicate as uh, something that was just sculpted and created as a 3D digital asset to begin with. There is a sense of tangibility to a lot of these things, which is really charming. And cool to see someone do. I was never in a daydream, just the other stuff was boring. Harold, I'm not sure which is worse. The idea of you living with your head in the clouds or never being excited by life. Only boring people get bored. I'm sorry, Professor. Um. She seemed pretty chill about that. I guess that's the way it works. Uh, to... Central Station. Destination chosen. We hope you enjoy your all water tube system journey. You have arrived. Please exit the tube in an orderly manner. We hope you travel with us again soon. But why isn't the line active? What needs improving? A man has a right to know. I don't know the exact decision making <laughs> process. That is very weird. This, sir. But I assure you, it will be for Yeah, no, I, I, I don't like that audio design decision. <laughs> so will we get discounts on the other lines as a result of the inconvenience? Ah, as of yet, there is no discount scheme in place, as we calculated the possible inconvenience to be negligible. Wouldn't need a discount if the prices weren't so high in the first place. I enjoy their voices, too. Fun actors they've cast. Um... Agora Arcades? This location is not accessible via your permission slip. And you know it. Sorry. Um, lab district? Destination decided. Enjoy the view. Fun setting, too. But Harold, I'm tired of chasing after you like you're a stupid butterfly. Hang on. What's a butterfly? That sounds silly. A butterfly is an insect from Earth. They had beautiful patterns on their wings and drank pollen from flowers. I suppose you could say they often appeared in, uh, extra natural moments in life. On the other hand, they were terribly inefficient, flighty, overly trusting, and delicate. Ergo, you never take responsibility, and I never know where to find you next. Harsh. Nice window. I know I drift off a bit sometimes, but but all water raised the tube fares again, and they never announce it properly. This time it really was an honest mistake. Plus, there was this woman who Quiet, Harold. We don't have time for your flights of fancy right now. There's important work afoot. Oh yeah. Have you checked the blockage in the filter station yet? And did you need to feed the fish too? Ah, uh, yes. Those two. I'm on the case. Bye, Professor. Aren't you forgetting something? Oh, uh, I'm sure those are all my tasks for the day. You seem to have waylaid your PDA. It really is a wonder you get anything done around here. Ah, thanks, Professor. It's got a life of its own. Strangely enough, I noticed you hadn't added your daily task list to it. And I don't want to have to remind you about them again. Oh, thanks. Let's see, uh... So, I access the list. It'll come back to me. Just go to the four selection buttons. Okay. Um, where were they again? The upper right of the pad! Ah, uh, yeah. Top of the four buttons, right? 
Uh, oh, open or close the PDA with Y. Cool. Then I use the navigation nub to highlight. Uh, and kay. then hit the bottom button. Precisely. Even just this little asset here. I'm really enjoying just the fun little textures on it. And it's how handmade it all feels. Because it all was, and then scanned, and that's cool. Okay, great. And it's the rightmost button to go back, right? Indeed. Now hop to it. And I'll see you at the Agora Arcades when you're done. Well, to be clear, photogrammetry, the technology they're using here, is something used a lot uh, for lots of video games. Lots in the AAA space. Like, we use it for scanning tons of objects uh, just from, like, the environment. Like, tons of rocks or piles of laundry, lots of the kinds of things you would see in the environment uh, and details of lots of uh, various video game environments. Many of those things are objects which were just literally scanned and then uh, brought in digitally. Uh, they do the same thing when they're like scanning, like for a Star Wars game, scanning in props from uh, like stormtrooper helmets and blasters and things like that. They could model all those things or they could literally take the props and scan them and bring them in to literally get that information just all there. And they're like, that's all very cool. They do it with faces too. Uh, that's basically the same technology that gets you like scanned actor faces and things like that brought in uh, to video games and then modified it. It's, it's cool tech. So like, it's not like they're using a wildly new uh, thing that no other game uses ever. <laughs> it's just a, uh, it's, Cool seeing it used in this particular way for this particular purpose. Uh, okay. And the effect is neat. Like, it's neat seeing the little texture details in their clothing when we get, like, uh, the close-up shots of them. Like, that does feel different than I would expect. Like, different than what I see in most other games and, uh, and character models. The more clay, almost wooden looking uh, textures of like the hair where it's like clearly painted in the specularity on the like the head highlights and all that. It's, like, it's all really cool. And I can understand why they did not go for actual stop motion animation for creating all these assets here because like, again, tiny team <laughs> stop motion animation is very tedious work indeed, especially if you need to do a lot of it. So I can fully understand them choosing to go for motion capture instead, just for practicality's sake. Uh, or, like, really not even having the option, having to do it for practicality's sake. I wonder, though, if there were some ways to try to use motion capture, but still try to evoke more the feel of uh, stop motion. I think if I were having to tackle this myself and use motion capture to do it, I think I would be trying to perform the motion capture a little bit more like a stop motion character, a little bit more exaggerated motion, and then probably try to apply a thing, uh, basically try to make it to where the character's animation like only updates every two to four frames or something. Create a little bit more of that lower frame rate, uh, stuttery stop motion feel, even if it's still motion capture data, just to try to give it a bit more of that stop motion impression, kind of like they're doing with the mouths. Like, the mouths are essentially doing that, because I'm guessing the mouths, when the characters talk, are switching between several of the hand-sculpted mouth poses that they made. Uh, and the mouths specifically do feel like a stop-motion character. And you probably couldn't make motion capture animation look exactly like stop-motion animation, but I think there are probably some things you could do to try to bridge the gap a bit. But I am still sympathetic. The game was in the works for like 10 years. I can understand them wanting to get a thing finished <laughs> and shipped. Which is so hard to do. We need to do tasks and stop rambling. Uh, like cleaning the filter station and feeding fish. This looks like fish feeding stuff. Drat, it's out of food. Oh. Better ask Cyrus about this. Ask Cyrus about fish food. 
Find Cyrus and then ask about fish food. Um, oh, my room. I see. Despite all the nitpicking I'm doing, I, I am just delighted seeing a game coming out looking like this. Oh. What? What have I done? Whatever this is, it looks neat. I better not touch it further. I don't know what I'm going to break. Cyrus! I don't know what any of the buttons in my house do. Oh, now I can run. Uh, lounge level one. Let's check out the lounge. We've been working hard. Ah, Harold. Perfect timing. Hello. Oh, Senor Tenenbaum. You too. I was just hoping to watch some Sun Tzu's Ashk. Got any idea how to work the old telly? Yeah, I think it's one of those all-water ad-only models. Ah. Should still be good for watching the announcement on tonight, though, right? You're really gonna watch that? They'll just announce another tube price hike again. Well, who knows? Diego from Health Services said he heard something about the reveal of something important. Uh, ooh. Tell me of this. What is Sonsu's Ashk? Yes, Sun Tzu's Ashk, Eternal Love. Best and only Turkish novella we have on board. I thought season 18 was bad, what with all the drama around Emery's cousin and whatnot. It's worth bowering through to season 36, though. That's where the plot really thickens. I'll try to check it out sometime. What brings you to the lounge? What brings you to the lounge, anyway? Would you guess that the tubes to the utility district and the social district are down again? Strangely, yes. I can believe that. Does that mean school is out? Yep. The bambinos are happy, and I don't mind the time off. But if it goes on much longer, they'll forget everything. Won't they do their homework? Maybe. The whole social district is off limits right now, so at least there won't be much else for them to do. Is that why you're hanging out here? Mostly. It's just kind of cozy here, though, you know? I suppose it is. Anyway, don't mind me, Harold. Bye, Chris. See you later, Harold. I'll be here if you want some company. Uh, thank you, but I have chores that I have been seriously neglecting, apparently. Um. Cyrus, are you in here? No? Um, filtration pump. Well, that's another chore we have. Maybe we'll run into Cyrus on the way. Hello out there. Cyrus? Oh. Um. I'm scared to hit buttons. But I'm going to anyway. Oh dear. Oh, oh boy. Um. I should stop, probably. Maybe this? Um. Did I do it? Oh my. Um. I sure am just hitting buttons. Help. Help. 
How do I escape? Huh. Hitting some of the buttons does seem to do something over there on the left. Darn if I know what, though. Um... Yes? Is this good? Clean as a whistle again. I hope you're right. I'm going to leave whistling nonchalantly and pretend I was never there. Flee the scene of the crime. Observatory below. Hmm. Maybe later. Cyrus? You want a cool little setting. Are you Cyrus? Hey, Cy. Oh, hey, Harold. Uh, what's going? Uh, I mean, uh, how's up? Just doing my usual rounds. Trying to clean the fish and feed the filter station. Super nice. How are the fishies doing? They're swimming away, looking good. But there's no food left in the fish feeding machine. Ah, lovely. Yeah, I've been thinking about fish a lot recently. I've been wondering if, you know, even fish blood is such a good fertilizer, what, the slow release phosphates and nitrogen? But we don't want to hurt fish. If samples were taken, we could somehow synthesize the. Sigh, sigh. That sounds very interesting, but what about the food for the fish themselves? Hmm? Oh, yes. Sorry, Pratt. Didn't I restock the other night? <sighs> Must have just thought about it. I'll have to formulate some more. You make the fish food yourself? Oh, I do indeed. I'm working on a new recipe at the moment, in fact. But, I mean, can fish even taste? It's not just about taste, it's about nutrition. We want their gills to function optimally, don't we? And their pigments to express as vividly as possible, a bit like flowers. Sigh, sigh. New fish food would be great. I'm sure they'll love it. Well, I'll get right on it, promise. Yeah, I think I have a test batch. Uh, yep, here. A uh, little taster to keep them going. Uh, you should try some too. Uh, thanks. I'll let you know what they think. Let's feed some fish. <laughs> oh, if did you see that? Um, was that fish real? Well, I'm not sure. I mean, even if it wasn't, their methods are getting way more sophisticated lately. Yeah. Mm, I kind of look forward to seeing what stunt they're going to pull next. Me too. As long as I don't have to clean it up. Do you remember their first messages? Ha, uh, yeah. Wasn't it something about Fedora not being able to take off being a conspiracy? Yes, on all those little flyers. Handwritten, too. What did that fish message mean, do you think? Hmm, I guess something about exploring the planet? Didn't it say what's out here? Ooh, like they've hidden something. Maybe they think the ocean is a conspiracy, too? This plot has just thickened a lot. Either the fish are trying to communicate with us, or someone is out there attaching messages to fish like carrier pigeons. In either case, I'd like an explanation. Uh, nope. Fish feeding this way. Nope, not you. Fish feeding. And also this, which I did not mean to bring down. Let's, um... Good. I'm guessing those are lab samples. Yo, fish! Guess what?
little fishing, your little dishy is now served. Eat hearty. Okay, Herald Bot Diagnostic Report. Scanning. Scanning. All tasks completed satisfactorily. Enjoyment evaluation. Minimal. Energy levels depleted. Recharging required. Next destination. Agora Arcades. Works for me. Assuming the tubes will allow us. To the arcade! Uh, let's see. Tube should be here. Right? Yes. Ah, why isn't this working? So typical. I suppose the ticket reactivation is still going to take a while. Dang. I don't know if I'd say we completed that PDA. Um, <laughs> loving the little doodles that we're adding to our little notebook. It's very cute. Um, well, I guess we can watch the announcement on the lounge TV. Let's do. For lack of other entertainment. Move over. Hello again. Hey, Chris. Ticket not working. Mind if I watch the announcement with you? Oh, be my guest. Not that I actually live here. <laughs> oh, it's starting. We chose the stars. Not instead of the Earth, but because of it. We chose sacrifice and responsibility. Uh, well, we didn't, I guess. But our ancestors did, and we wouldn't be here if they hadn't. Left, I mean. We'd be back on Earth, and where would that have got anyone? We may not have ever seen our home, tasted its air, or gazed across its boiling seas, but we remember it. And then we made a new home, even if it wasn't quite what anyone had in mind. And one corporation, over all others, helped make that possible. All water. On that note, I'd like to introduce Madam CEO Brenna Castlechop. Good day to you all. As you may know, I am Brenna Castlechop, the CEO of All Water Corporation. More importantly, I'm a citizen of the Fedora just like you. And it's my unmitigated pleasure today to show you what you're about to see. Join me in reliving and celebrating the remarkable journey we've been on together before we unveil the next step of that journey. It may have started with one man, but it took the hearts and minds of many more to make the dream a reality. That dream began at the height of the Cold War, when the world was on the very brink of annihilation. He conceived of an arc-like spacefaring ship financed by the wealthiest countries, families, and private institutions such as the Schlippmeyer Foundation as a gesture of global care for the human race. That ship journeyed for 200 years, was home to five generations, and sailed past many solar systems, making fascinating discoveries along the way, like the bacteria that are now responsible for our energy supply, or the mineral samples we took from planets along the way that allow us to build new materials. We had difficulties to deal with too, such as surprise asteroid fields, periods of hopelessness, and the unpleasant, albeit brief, alien infestation. Oh dear. And of course, 120 years after launch, our last message from our beloved Earth in its final moments. After 200 years, we finally arrived at our destination, only to find that the promising, watery planet contained no habitable landmass and dense, toxic gases in the atmosphere. Hardly the second Earth we had hoped for. It wasn't long into our new search that the solar winds came. Maybe our ancestors couldn't have possibly known, or maybe they could. 
that they would cause our ship to crash, just like Icarus, but with worse luck. Either way, we can be thankful for a soft landing and good waterproofing. Wasn't that a wild ride, huh? We've achieved so much aboard the Fedora, but we've never stopped thinking big. We had the idea to make sure we weren't missing out on anything going on outside. We're in a whole new galaxy, so we should be listening to see what the local news is. So we hatched a new plan. A state-of-the-art, deep space radio boy capable of keeping itself afloat and slowly circumnavigating our watery new home while scanning for signals and interesting cosmic gossip. And, wait for it, yes, we're delighted to announce it's floating to the surface right now. That's right, the boy will be in position in another few hours. Big congratulations and thanks to All Water for making this possible. I'm excited to see what we pick up. That was some announcement, huh? Sure, makes for some nice gossip. But I think they should fix the tube system or upgrade the TVs, eh? For this fancy boy drama, eh? Yeah, that'd be nice. What if there really is nothing else out there? Exacto mundo! We should be focusing on inner space before outer, huh? <laughs> yeah, man. Speaking of inner space, I hope the tickets are working again tomorrow. Que claro. At least I brought some homework to Mark. Those bambinos will forget everything at this rate. And you've got your trusty couch? <laughs> yep. We've gotten to know each other well. Okay. I'm gonna get some sleep. Buena notte, Chris. Buena notte, Harold. That's a fun premise. I have a, hang on, I'm gonna try a thing. I'm curious. Okay, back. Sorry about that. I This may not change anything, but I had the thought, like, if I... If I bump this down to 30 FPS, does that actually look slightly more stop motion? I, I don't think it's going to. I think you'd need to have a more noticeable lower frame rate look to on the character motion, at least, to get that feel. But, uh, I wonder. Oh, Chris? What's up, hombre? I just wondered, what's it like being a teacher? Oh, it's great! The bambinos can be little devils, but... Place like this, gotta keep the mind active. They're all going to have to pull their way to it keep it. It does actually help a little bit. Smoothly, huh? Not like completely, but a little bit. It does actually help. It does make me think that if they dropped the like, uh, this would take more work. And at this point, with the game shift and everything, probably not be worth it. If they did something that intentionally dropped the character animation, like frame rate effectively down to 12 or 15 frames per second it might break a bunch of other things in their animation systems but i think it might actually evoke a little bit more of a stop motion feel which is not like a perfect solution but it might be like a decent duct tape solution to kind of getting a little bit more of that stop motion aesthetic working in the animation part i don't know maybe not what do you think will happen if the boy does find something? Hmm. Doesn't seem to me like we'll be able to do much. I don't get this obsession with distracting ourselves from the real stuff. You mean like teaching the next generation? Sure. But we can all keep learning. That shouldn't stop when you leave school. Chris. I'm sorry, Harold. These essays aren't going to mark themselves. Get some sleep. And switching it to 30 FPS also means that, uh, well, assuming it did, I don't even know if it did work correctly, but. Your water tube system will shortly be closing for the night. Please attend to the necessary travel arrangements. Get home safe. In changing the game completely to kind of the 30 FPS, that also means that the rest of like the scrolling in motion, like you're seeing more stutter in the background now, right? Which is probably not how it's supposed to be looking even at 30 FPS, but whatever. If that were, like, if the camera and game motion were all going at a smooth 60, but the characters were noticeably more stuttery, I think that actually would help. Again, it's not exactly what stop motion animation looks like, but it would help. It would be like a visual shorthand cheat that kind of evokes it. 
is my suspicion. Sorry, you're getting kind of less of a look at Harold Halibut and more a me sitting here brainstorming on how I would like... <laughs> how... It's me Monday morning quarterbacking as a game dev, basically. <laughs> Trying to think how I would try to solve problems. All of these solutions are, I'm fairly certain, things they also considered and thought about, and there are probably reasons they didn't. Off the top of my head, the fact that they are doing some... Real time stuff like. Oh boy, what a day! Here's hoping tomorrow is a bit more relaxed. I could do with a day off. All this running back and forth for people is tiring, man. But Agent Harrelson, that's what they pay you for. Don't let us down now. Rich inner life on this guy. But yeah, I'm guessing maybe. Maybe even just with, like, their inverse kinematic stuff that they've got going on with, like, legs and feet and things like that. Like, maybe... Trying to artificially... Reduce frame rate on character animation would start breaking stuff there without a whole lot more work. It's game dev, man. Fixing one thing always breaks three other things. If anyone ever tells you that, like, a feature or a system or whatever else would be easy and fast to implement, it'll take five minutes... Unless they are literally the engineer who's working on that problem at the studio, do not believe them. They don't know. Morning, Harold. Hello, Professor. What did you think of that announcement? It was quite fantastically self-aggrandizing. Yes, it did go on a bit. The boy seems cool, though. Indeed. I'm sure it'll make a great source of distraction. Now, if you're quite ready... Sure. Um, ready for what? I made a breakthrough discovery at the Arboretum last night. Do you remember the last batch of bloomy rocks? Oh, the really small ones from the last intake? The ones with the strange shapes and the little holes and... The blue ones, yes. Turns out their surface composition doesn't just give us clues about our immediate aquatic environs. I think they've picked up some influences from outer space as well. Take a look through the microscope. You'll see what I mean. Just remind me exactly how that thing works again. Harold, are you fooling me? This will be the last time I explain it to you, so for once, pay attention. You need to open the hatch first. Why do they keep us around? Guess there's nowhere else for us to go. Now, activate the switch next to the door to open the sample shelf. Sample shelf, right. That's what I found earlier. The rock you want is in the container on the lower right. If you okay. your left and right, bring it to the microscope and insert it into the hatch. Could you speak up? You've walked 12 feet away. Et voila! Check the microscope and finally you'll see what I mean. Okay. The one you're looking at now seems to have picked up radiation from our nearest sun. There's a particular mark for each time there's been a solar flare. I can only see one mark? That's the problem. There isn't enough of a recording on this one. I dated it to roughly 40 BC. So we need an older one for... Exactly. Older ones, ideally. Although I doubt we'll have much luck catching more of them by chance. Oh, yes. We have to figure out when there's going to be a gap between flares. Flares cause the solar winds. A gap between solar storms is our only window for leaving this place. I need you to look into this, Harold. If anyone on board has an older rock, we need it procured. Yes? But if we're not going to be able to catch one, where am I supposed to start looking? You could start at Tommy's store. You and I both know that guy somehow gets hold of whatever those filter stations spit out, and then sells them at an outrageous markup. Good evening, Jean. Nice to see you, Bridget. Is the sample in the microscope? I'm really curious to inspect it. Yes, you definitely should. Hello.
Hey. Hey, you're the professor's assistant, Jeremy, right? Um, yes, but no, I'm Harold Halibut. I interned in your section for about a year. Oh, goodness, you're a microwave boy. So, you do remember me. Yes, how could I forget that debacle? Actually, I've just met with your professor. Is everything okay? Not entirely, but I probably shouldn't be telling you. Okay, I'll... But I suppose if Moreau trusts you, I'm a bit worried about our ship's energy reserves. I thought I'd talk to your boss about it. She's the smartest person on board, isn't she? Um. Did you guys talk about the Bloomy Rocks at all? Did you guys talk about the Bloomy Rocks at all? Moreau said I should maybe check with your husband. As a matter of fact, we did. As for my husband, you'll have to ask him, which is more than I've been able to do the past few days. Knowing that infuriating rock collection, I'm sure he'll find you something. He's a sweetheart, really, you know? Go ask him. Well, I'd love to, but I probably should be wrapping this up. Despite all my nitpicking, it's a really neat game, neat aesthetic. I, I really appreciate any <laughs> anybody who brings something really unique and original to the table. Which is, like, all the more impressive in an era where there's, like, dozens and dozens of games hitting Steam weekly. <laughs> Being able to drop something that actually stands out, very difficult. And boy, they sure have done it. Congrats to them for finally getting this across the finish line. And thank you all for watching. I will see you all tomorrow for some more Elden Ring. Take care, everyone. Goodbye!